This is from Brazen Hall Brewing Company. This is Ballsy Bastard Dark Saison Seasonal Beer. Expect the Ballsy Bastard to have chocolate and roasted notes, subtle fruit and spice combining to create a smooth drinking experience. Hey ho! Well, that's interesting. It's got a little bit more of the uh, of the fruit and spice in it that I was expecting, but the uh, chocolate and uh, roast does definitely come through. So today, I'm feeling a little bit uh, uncreative and lazy, so I'm just going to do a teardown and satisfy some curiosity. Specifically, I'm tearing down this little uh, motion detector nightlight thing that uh, another maker sent me in a mailbag a few weeks back. So what it appears to be is a little plug-in nightlight that should, if I stop moving... It's supposed to stop uh, stop being lit up once it sees no motion in the room for a while. But maybe it's having trouble, so I'll just cover it with that. And wait. Okay, so there it's finally shut itself off. That took quite a while. Almost a minute. So now it should, when it detects motion again, light up. Hey, detect some motion. Hello. Hello. Detect motion. Well. Oh, wait. Okay. Huh. That was not exactly the sort of motion detection that I was hoping for. Oh, well. Let's see. Uh, let's see what's going on inside here. It's clearly it's not all that sensitive to the world around it. You would hope that it would be a little bit more than that, but... So what does it say? Oh yeah, what does it say on the back of here? It says a Meritac model NL Auto, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 1 watt. None of that's all that surprising. It's got the ETL listing and the Intertech listing. Okay. It, uh, if those are honest, then I guess that's reasonable enough. It's not going to burn your house down, theoretically, anyway. I mean, that's the whole point of those inspections, right? Is to uh, show that they're safe. Not necessarily that they work for the purpose that they're intended, just that they won't, you know, burn your house down and kill you. So, what happens when we spudge in here? Okay. That's easy enough. Oh, wow. There's things going on in here. There's quite a lot, actually. Well, nothing for it but to dig deeper. Three more screws here. And we can take a closer look at what's actually going on. All right. So after that, that just lifts out. And this is just diffusion for the three LEDs that are on the front. So the little LED subboard is labeled PIR Nightlight LED and the main board is just labeled PIR Nightlight. So this thing should just pop off the little infrared sensor. There it is. So I think a lot of people have explained these things before. Basically that is just sensing infrared from the environment um, but it's kind of like a single pixel essentially so you don't get any motion sensing from that what this little lens does you kind of see the segments in the lens it creates a, sort of a pattern on there a pattern of, of uh, dots representing the space around it and if you move across this or anything that's emitting infrared heat basically um, it changes what that pattern looks like across this and changes the intensity of it. And that is supposed to be what triggers the thing. Um, I'm sure there's better explanations of that all over the internet. For instance, Big Clive's channel. He's looked at several passive infrared devices. Anyway, um, down here we have, oh, a photoresistor, which was poking through that little hole there. I guess that ex maybe it was too uh, 
too bright in here, so that's why it wasn't triggering. Okay, we'll have to try it again later. Uh, other than that, here is the uh, live and neutral non-polarized plug. So either one of those could be live and neutral. So, okay, they're, they're labeled on this side. This side is labeled live. You can see a little marking there. Um, that goes up to RF1, resistor, comma, fusible. Uh, from there, it goes to this capacitor. So this is basically a capacitive dropper. That goes up to there. There's a bleeder resistor so that this thing doesn't retain charge and light you up when you touch it. Uh, fold that up. Power from there goes to a bridge rectifier with a capacitor across it and a Zener diode. Okay, so that's all just pretty standard power supply stuff. So from the neutral, there's a trace that goes around to the other end of this uh, resistor. From there, up to the other AC terminal of the bridge rectifier. There's positive and negative coming out. Uh, going to that capacitor. And it's got a Zener diode across it, which clamps it down. Goes through and to one end of the LED board. Other end of the LED board looks like it's on a via to this transistor here. And a resistor and another transistor and then up to the little controller board okay so nothing too surprising biss 0001 that is precisely what you'd expect to find in one of these things um it is a standard pir passive infrared sensing chip so there's no real surprises inside here um other than how grody this soldering is up here. Wow, that's pretty blobtacular. And we got some flux that nobody bothered to clean up. Oh, that's why it's blobby. Is it, uh, so the copper that goes to those pins is 100% on this side. There's no copper on this side. Which means that to solder it, they were basically trying to make contact with, I assume it's a plated through hole, a one-sided plated through hole. It's a little odd. So the BISS0001 Micropower PIR Motion Detector IC, low power CMOS. It's got dual modes, uh, retriggerable and non-retriggerable. This particular one doesn't have any kind of a switch on it, so it just does what it does. So pin one switches that, okay. Uh, the output is on pin two. There's some post width controls. I assume that's probably what those uh, what those little networks of resistors and capacitors are doing. Uh, ground reset, yeah. Trigger disable. Um, bias current, yeah. Whatever. Supply voltage, three to five volts. Um, oh, the output current, I'm assuming that's the load, can be up to 10 milliamps with a 5 volt uh, supply. There is what's going on inside. Okay, so here is these two inputs to that op amp and an output. So there's just a standalone op amp in there? Okay. Um, and the second op amp's uh, non-inverting or inverting input comes in. And you pick it off, goes through these two op amps gates and gates and magic happens in there there's those resistors and capacitors for timing and stuff and the output kind of black boxy once you get into there hmm. but here is the schematic and that's probably pretty close to what's on our little board here these things tend to use uh, stick fairly close to this except for the power supply section uh and we don't have a relay on our output, we just got some transistors. So here is the infrared sensor itself. Um, you can tell that because it's got light coming in. Uh, power and ground and the signal comes out here into pin 14, which is one of the op amps. Okay, so that's a so the signal from there basically just gets op or amplified two stages and then goes back into the thing and does its magic. Meanwhile, over here we have the photoresistor, the CDS cell, cadmium sulfide uh, 
photoresistor, variable resistor, light dependent resistor, whatever you want to call it. It is set up in a voltage divider mode uh, on pin 9. Pin 9 is a VC, a control voltage, which also goes into this into this gate and then into there. Okay, high resistance at low light and low resistance at high light. So that's going to uh, pull that from high to low as uh, as the light changes. Okay, and then... Uh, what is one doing here? It's either going high or low. Oh, that's that enable disable, wasn't it? Oh no, pin one is that retriggerable, retriggerable, non-retriggerable. Okay, basically meaning it'll reset itself after a while and uh, let you trigger, or it'll just be a one shot. It'll come on and stay on until you repower re the circuit or hit the reset or something. We have and we have a transistor on ours. It's just it's driving LEDs instead of a 12 volt relay. Okay. All right, uh, I've got a not at all dangerous, he said, uh, tongue firmly planted in cheek, uh, set up here. Um, so it you can see that it's lit up just by the little glow underneath there. I've got the, uh, the photo detector black taped off, so hopefully it's not detecting. So it thinks it's dark right now. Um, but let's uh, just take a look at a few of the different things on the board. So first of all, uh, AC line voltage du jour is 121 and a half ish. So this uh, capacitor in the capacitor dropper is going to be blocking a fair bit of that. It's actually dropping 116 volts. So there's only five-ish volts AC, five or six volts AC getting through it to the next stage of the power supply. Um, try and do this while not killing myself, but still making it uh, visible for you. So that capacitor and that zener are what's uh, providing the power supply, the main power supply. Let's go across the capacitor, 11.9495 should be the same thing across the zener. Yeah, so it's essentially a 12 volt zener. So that's the main power supply, which will be lighting up the LEDs and stuff down there. And then there was this other zener down here, which will be providing the power supply for the chip. And that's four volts, essentially. Can you see that through the shadow? Yeah. And through all of this, you may have noticed that the light down here has dimmed itself down and then come back up when it's noticed me in motion around it. That's why there's two transistors that we saw down in there. So what I, how I think this is happening is one of them is switching the, uh, the LEDs on when this thing tells them to turn on. The other one, I think, is connected to this photoresistor, which is also connected down to here, but that allows it to, when it's dark out, as it thinks it is right now because of the tape, then it will uh, rest on a dim setting rather than going completely out. All right, so now we're in full brightness mode. And the voltage across the LEDs, 8.75. Each LED is dropping 2.9 volts, which for a white LED, I guess that's what you'd expect. There's clearly a uh, series resistor in there um, to current limit them. 36 milliamps. 35, 36 milliamps. Okay. So after a bit more poking around, uh, pin 2, the output of the chip, which is the motion detection, goes down through this resistor into the base of this transistor and then this, and then straight out to the LEDs. I've just got my probe on the other side of the board there. So this transistor is switching to the LEDs to full power. This transistor is switching through, they're switching through this uh, 51 ohm resistor to the LEDs. And the base of it 
is coming is that one and it's coming from the variable resistor up here the light dependent resistor so variable resistor is affecting both the chip and whether or not uh, when it's off it goes down to, to dim or fully out I guess that makes sense you don't want your nightlight on even dimly during the day what's the point in that but this way the photo detector can tell it that even when it's off uh, it's being commanded off by the fo the uh, motion detector that it's still on just dim hmm just as a safety net light so i did a bit more poking around i keep poking around after i start second guessing myself on this thing so these transistors down here are switching to the low side and the current limiting resistor is this one here so that's connected directly to the to the uh, LED panel and then it is doing the current limiting which on the high side and that is a 1k resistor and then you can that just goes directly to the bridge rectifier the, the 12 volt zener diode and the positive side of that power supply cap up there I'm not quite sure what more I can say about this thing, other than I'm not super thrilled about the sensitivity of this PIR. Um, maybe if I try it out in an actual real environment. Okay, there it is plugged in in my other workbench area, and it is currently fairly dark in the room. Uh, not completely pitch black, but this thing is currently sitting in its dim mode. Now I'm going to walk in just behind the camera. And it's noticed me. Okay, it's come up to full brightness. That's pretty nice. And after I plugged it in and put the camera here, it took almost a full minute to dim down. So I assume once it stops seeing me moving around, it's going to do the same thing. But now I'm going to turn the lights on and let it uh, settle itself down again and see what happens. Okay, now with the room brightly lit and me standing where the thing can't see me, it is out after again a minute or so. I'm just going to approach from behind the camera and see what happens. Nothing. I guess that makes sense too. It should stay off, shouldn't it? Okay, so when I'm casting a bit of a shadow, I've got... A, I've got this little light down here so when I'm casting a bit of shadow on it oh that's interesting so it uh, did go into dim for a second as soon as I took this extra little bit of light off so the overhead light which is up there just common fluorescent is coming down and looks like it's actually casting a bit of a shadow on that thing let me just zoom in a bit so it looks like the light sensor is actually in a shadow huh but when i had this extra little bit of light down here that was enough to uh, light up that photoresistor probably just a mechanical alignment issue with the photoresistor though i uh, don't know what else would cause that other than just maybe a cheap design well, except for that photoresistor not uh, or being in a bit of a shadow there, I guess you could plug it in this way up and that wouldn't happen. Um, that's the one advantage about this not being a polarized plug. You can put it either which way you want. Uh, so if you put it that way, it probably could get a bit more light in there. Okay, it seems like a reasonable enough thing. It's fairly solidly made, except for that... Uh, It'd be nice if that uh, photoresistor had a bit more view of the front, but whatever. Um, other than that, oh yeah, it seems like a reasonable enough thing. Well, thanks to uh, another maker for sending that in, in his amazing box of stuff that he sent me a while ago. Um, that was kind of fun to look at, and I might actually use that somewhere, if I can find a place where I can, uh, where it can get enough light during the daytime. Uh, what do you think? Um... Comments or questions about this thing or whatever, um, down in the comment section as usual. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.